This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. On the night of September 19, 1988, in Indianapolis, Indiana, Tammy Wright and her husband Joe decided to take their two-year-old daughter for a ride in Joe's tow truck as he hauled a car across town. They had no reason to be concerned as they made their way through the darkened city streets. A friend of mine from school, Penny, and her boyfriend, Troy, and they asked us to tow a car for him, and it was just like any other wreck or run. Penny walked back to the wrecker to tell Joe where they wanted the car parked. She just kind of got a blank look. I mean, he goes running after this guy, and the guy had already hit us in the rear end, not even tried to stop. I saw a boy take off like a madman. That was crazy, too, because the guy had already done damage, and we didn't know what he was capable of. Joe Wright reported the accident to the roadside service company that had dispatched his truck. I seen him come back around, I seen the guy pull into the driveway. reaches into his trunk and grabs his ball bat and heads to the house. A follow-up call to the Marion County Sheriff's Department reported that the suspect was now armed with a shotgun. Deputy Eugene Patrick was the first officer on the scene. At that point, you know, he told me quickly what happened. He said the man with the gun is in that house and pointed to the house where he was at. Everything's speeding up now because you're getting geared up for a potential dangerous situation. I don't care who you are, police officer, uh, fireman, or any of John citizen. You know, you get scared. You know, you can, you know, you're not invincible. You can get shot, too, and killed. Moments later, Sergeant Ron Carey arrived and took charge of the situation. We had one neighbor that had spoken to one of the officers that stated he had shot someone in the past, and they believed that he was armed with at least one high-caliber rifle inside the house. Deputy Paul Thompson arrived on the scene with his dog, Ando. He 
asked me what we had and where I needed him to position himself. I advised him to be along a driveway of the neighbor's house. Sheriff SWAT team was also called in, led by Lieutenant Jim Wampler. My gut told me something's not right here. I don't know what it is, but something's not right here, based primarily on the fact that he was supposedly so violent at first. And he was outside. He was showing people his weapon. He was running up and down the street. Thompson was taken to be treated for a shotgun blast to the foot. About that time, one of the paramedics went over and checked the dog. And they said uh, there were no vital signs. And he'd already passed away. Ando had reacted to save Paul's life without being given a command. After everything he did, I just felt bad about leaving him away there. But luckily I had uh, some friends to take care of it. I remember I, I had a hard time when I got to the hospital, and 
the, the chaplain arrived. And uh, I scribbled out on a little note. I said, uh, I said, could you uh, say a little prayer for my dog? And he did. And it, it helped. The suspect eluded capture that night, but turned himself in the following morning. He later pleaded guilty to attempted murder of an officer and battery on a law enforcement animal, and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Three years later, Paul Thompson has a new canine partner, Hero. But for Paul and his family, Honda will never be able to be replaced. Honda was a hero. And the fact that he is a dog should not depreciate from the fact that he he committed an act. He committed the ultimate sacrifice by saving Paul's life. Onda was honored as Indiana's Law Enforcement Officer of the Year, the first dog ever to win the award. I felt bad that I could never express my gratitude to him for what he did or say goodbye. I'd say thanks, my friend, for what you did. <laughs>